everybody. Welcome to Caroline's Closet. I'm Caroline. I am here with you today to do an unboxing video of Goodwill DIY jewelry. I ordered two of the five pound boxes. I actually ordered these two or three weeks ago and they've been sitting for definitely over a week, maybe almost two weeks, waiting for me to crack into them. But it's Saturday after Christmas. It's been kind of a hectic week. This next week is going to be kind of a hectic week too, so I'm not sure when I'll get around to the second one. They are still $19.99 each, but they did start charging shipping, which puts them up to $27.98. I think it's $7.99 to ship. But you can get the two boxes both shipped for the same $7.99. So that's what I did. And then the Friday before Christmas, I tried to snag another two, but I was too late. Um, they had sold out. So yesterday, I was able to snag another two boxes, which will come sometime next week. Uh, so I paid, and these I think I had a 10% discount on. So I ended up spending, it was like $34 or something. I got like three something off. Uh, so going to get through one of them. Now I always find stuff in here that I don't know about or that is not magnetic and I want to test it for silver or gold um, or that I'm unsure of the value of a brand um, or whatever the case may be. So at the very end of this video I will go back through and I will show the individual the pieces that I plan to sell individually, those that I feel have enough value that I could get um, list on their own on eBay or Poshmark and I will share what I will sell them for um, and anything that does test as gold or silver. This is really pretty sparkly. I'm guessing it is a choker. Well, that is quite some bling. This would definitely be something I could sell individually um, just on the merit of what it is, even though the Velcro sticks to my hair. It doesn't have any branding markings or anything on it, but I would guess this would be something I would put up for 10 to $12, eBay, Poshmark, or Mercari, and um, maybe include in my 5 for 20 sale on Poshmark, but it's unique enough and cool enough and blingy enough and not sold at every Walmart around the nation enough that I could probably sell. So, earrings I'm just going to all make a pile of and hope to find some matches. This seems to be a DIY project of somebody's. I saw this sitting at the top. I'm guessing it didn't come with this flower glued to it and it's definitely feels like tin but it's a fun locket kind of a big big size locket so you could actually fit picture in there um, but I'm guessing it's like an aluminum or a tin or something definitely magnetic but it's cool I could probably find a gold tone chain and put that on it and uh, sell it as it is or I don't know craft it or something but it's unique enough I think I could make money on it we'll see my next video when I do the other box I'm going to try a different setup um, I know some people have talked about not wanting the right window behind me um, I've got one on both sides of me uh, or having me just do it with the camera focused down on the jewelry so you could see the pieces a lot better. So I'm going to try that, but I have to set up a space. I think I know how I'll set it up. I also have to kind of rig my stand because it is um, kind of a cheapy little stand and if I tilt the camera down on it, the phone down on it, it wants to topple forward. So I'll have to make sure I can get it set up properly. This says Japan is the only marking on there. And that little tag. 
but it is a cool, fun, black and gold tone beaded piece. This is a coach bracelet. I've never seen one like this, but if it's legit, it might be something that can sell. It's just uh, like a nylon ribbon, but it does have the little coach button on it, snap on it. It's kind of cool. Another collar type necklace. No branding, no markings that I can see on there. And it's kind of a little bent out of shape, so I don't know if that might be something I'd throw in a craft pile or um, put up at my booth, what I'll do with it. but. You guys, somebody commented on one of my last videos and said, Oh, I really want, want that squash blossom necklace that you threw in your craft pile. And if I did that, I'm highly ashamed of myself. I can't imagine that I would have. Um, but I went through some of my craft stuff because most of it had been just sitting since my last few videos. And I didn't find anything that resembled a squash blossom necklace. And I can't find the comment now on the video because I wanted to go back and watch the video and see what necklace I tossed in a craft pile that um, appeared to be a squash blossom necklace. So if that was you that made that comment, let me know what video it was. I want to know. I want to find that because I can't imagine I would have. But this is <laughs> really funky, really unique. It's a lion thing with a yellow toothy thing coming out of it. That's really cool. It doesn't have any branding or anything. It's just on a... That might be a leather cord with the adjustable ends. I have never seen anything like that. But again, that falls in the this is unique. I could sell it on its own pile. So, oh, wow. So I'm enjoying this box so far a lot. Oh, this is cool too. Elephants, look at those elephants, says Sterling. This has kanji writing inside of it that I am not familiar with. I'm willing to bet it's Sterling. And if it is, that's probably an 80, 90, 100 dollar piece right there. So I will definitely test it and see. But wow, okay. Now I really want to get in this box. This, this looks good. Unless all the best pieces were on top. But this is pretty. I'm guessing it's not anything too special and it appears to be broken. So there is no end to clasp on here. It does say something. Ice it says something ice on it. it. Might even say sterling ice. I'm not sure. It's not magnetic, so I can. No, no these pieces are magnetic. And yeah, that is too. It says something ice on it. It's pretty. I don't see any missing stones, it just doesn't have the clasp on this end. Unless, oh, maybe it just closes like that. Hmm. I will have to figure out what that says and then look this one up. So, if you're just curious to see if I get anything of value and what I'll make out of the box, you can just go straight ahead to the very end of the video and I will give you more information on values. Very magnetic, just a little bangle bracelet. Bracelets I normally just put in large lots of random bracelets if there's nothing special about them. Working on this. 
super long strand of like Mardi Gras bead pearls. Those will definitely go. Oh, two, two very long strands of Mardi Gras beads. Those will go in a craft lot. That is okay. Oh, this I like too. I don't see any branding on it, but look at that. It's just an like enamel hinge bracelet. Really pretty butterflies and flowers around the outside. It might be something that gets its own listing just out of uniqueness. This I'm guessing was an earring piece. Could probably yank that out and have it become a bracelet, although it might be a little too small. This is some buttons. Buttons, buttons. Let's see. They look like old buttons. There's two different ones. They look exactly the same except different sizes. See, my problem is I can't hold it still enough for the camera to focus when I'm doing it this way. These look really neat though. Really neat. Not magnetic, so I will test them. I'm guessing like brass or something though, but they look old and cool. Worth looking into. This is another fun necklace. Not very broken. Wearable. No markings. Trying not to lose my loop and my magnet this video. I always have a habit of losing those fun little charm bracelet. Crazy cat lady charm on there um, with a couple of cats, uh, knitting needles. Karen, if you're watching, I've got your charm bracelet. It's just for you. It's got gold tone on the end. I might test it. It's just got like two little pieces that are gold tone. And sometimes that means it's a good sterling and gold thing, but I don't Yeah, this this part is all very magnetic. But the ends attached to it are not, and they don't match the other the rest of it, so but that's fun. Karen, one of my friends, or another crazy cat lady who also likes to knit, would uh, enjoy that, I'm sure. This is just a bracelet set that's attached together. I don't think it's... Hmm. There's a very slight magnetic pull, but it's got like a copper color showing through the silver finish. But it's pretty fun, probably for a bracelet lock. When I got these boxes, guys, they were not near as um, shaky and didn't sound like there was broken stuff all inside, so I was kind of excited. I thought maybe Goodwill finally started bagging um, the stuff up so it's nice and tight in the boxes, but they did not. This is just a cool chain, chain link, long silver tone necklace. Not magnetic, not marked in any way. I can add that to my needs to be tested pile. <gasps> no. no. Is this? 
This looks like it could be a cool old sterling. It's got... I don't think that's real turquoise, though. And if it were old sterling Native American, it would be real turquoise. Maybe. But look at that. That's gorgeous. Unmarked also. This might be my best box ever, guys. I'll just stop with these two pieces and not move on. The rest will be disappointing. These are just a pair of earrings. It says Made in Korea on the back. They will go in an earring lot. the good pieces I pull out. I want more. I want more. I want more. Here are some kitty cats. I'm guessing it's an anklet. It's a little too big for a bracelet and way too small to fit around someone's neck. But it's got a little fish on one end. And then this piece is a cat that the fish goes through. And then it's got little kitty cat faces charms on there they might be eh, probably not sterling but again unique enough that I could sell it so plastic bangle just a little red tin metal bracelet cheap little gold bracelet. This is, looks like it might be better of something, but it's just a bracelet. No markings. Very magnetic in my bracelet pile. When I first started doing jewelry, I listed a lot more than I list now. Um, now I'm much pickier. These are fun beads of some nature to figure out what those are, but because it doesn't feel like plastic and it's not glass, I don't know, a little heavier than plastic, but it's, I mean, it does feel cheap. Maybe it's just old. I don't know, but it doesn't have any ends to it. So that would be a craft pile item for sure. This fun little bracelet or anklet. Handmade it looks like, or designed to look handmade. Funky little metal statement bracelet. Very magnetic. Now this would be something that I might have originally chosen to list on its own online or sell at the booth or something but I like these pieces for crafting so even though it's fully intact and somebody might want it for the time it would take me to list uh, it's not really as worth it as what I would want this is just gold bead not quite like Mardi Gras bead but similar um, necklace. Now, probably craft pile for that also. Some more Mardi Gras beads, craft pile. This is a cool shell and glass like marble stretch bracelet. That might be something worthy of its own listing. I feel like I'm saying that a lot, which I like saying that a lot. I don't want to list anything on its own unless I feel like somebody would buy it. And so that means I feel like people would buy this stuff. This is J. Crew, and it's interesting. It's just got this little piece, but the pieces like bend up in the back. I don't I don't know why they necessarily have to be
mobile, bendable, I don't know. Articulated. But yes, it does have the little J Crew hang tag. It's very discolored and dirty. But that's an easy ten bucks, if not more. Here is another one of those stretch shell bracelets, but this one has a bunch of chains tangled into it. So this is the part, the reason I haven't tried to do um, the camera face directly at the jewelry before is I watched some of those videos and there seems to be just like a lot of dead air where, you know, there's nothing in front of the camera while people are untangling or doing whatever. And it's fine because a lot of times I'm just listing and I'm not strictly watching anyway. I like the colors on this one. Um, but I feel like if I'm in front of your face doing it, I might sell those together as a lot. Add a little value to them. I feel like if I'm in front of your face doing it, then while I'm messing around trying to untangle at least, it's not just empty space you're looking at. I don't know. You let me know. These are funky. They're like giant pearls. Carol Lee. I think I've sold Carol Lee before. I don't know why I try to get it to show, but it's a little heart hang tag. It says Carol Lee on the side. They are giant pearls. And they are individually knotted in between each one, which is normally a good sign of quality. Um, or at least value, because that takes more effort than just throwing them on a string, for sure. Clasp works. That might be some decent money there. Let's see, let's see. Putting the earrings aside, we'll go back to those. More junk, not junk, not junk, craft beads. Uh, another one. Craft beads. And I don't like doing the crafting with just that stuff either because then it's not as special. So, yes, I put them in a craft bead pile, but they will be used with other stuff. This is just a fun little souvenir necklace, shells, and beads from uh, Melbourne Beach, Florida. And I don't know, that might be something that I would put in my craft lot just because it doesn't seem special enough and you have to have somebody looking for Melbourne Beach stuff. This is just a plasticky bead necklace, but it has a tag. And it says something. upside down. I think it says Sarah, but I can't tell if it says Cove. Yeah, Sarah Covington. That's worthy of selling. It doesn't seem like other Sarah Covington pieces, but worth it to look into. Man, whoever put together this box, I like it. This is a fun, not magnetic piece. And normally when you can see the holes behind where all the gemstones are, they're a little nicer or more real semi-precious stones. Um, these are not like prong set or anything, so, but it, 
I will definitely test this and look into it. It doesn't have any markings, but it's really pretty. That might be one even if it's junk that I would keep for myself. I don't mind wearing junk if I like it. Magnetic, magnetic. Those will go in my bracelet bundle. Fun little stretch bracelet. Not magnetic at all, so that'll be worth testing out. Another generic bangle. Stretch bracelet with not a whole lot of stretch. But I like it. It is not at all magnetic either. It does seem older. Might test the silver out on that one. A little tiny bag of itty bitty sequins and teeny tiny beads. Just throwing that in my garbage pile because honestly I have so much of that stuff and I don't need it. This is a tiny like disc stretch bracelet. It has a tag on it that says $28. Let me see if the back has has other tags. No, no brand or anything. Unless it's under there. I don't know necessarily what those discs are made of that would make this a $28 bracelet, but worth looking into. Another earring. Hey, another one of these shell stretch bracelets. So now, if I choose to do them as a lot, I have three for that lot. Just makes them easier to sell. Ow, I just poked myself on like a brooch pin or something. I know it's in here. I'm scared to dip my hand back in. Oh, this is cool. I'm so easily distracted. Forget the pain, I found something that looks cool. It's got a good looking clasp that looks like quality. It's got this silver key hanging off of these wooden, it's wooden and then it's got little like cat eye brown glass beads. But no brand indicator anywhere that I can see. But worth, worth selling. So now I'm going to have to get even pickier because now I'm finding more good stuff. Pretty little pendant. And it's got a hair stuck in it. And it's also got the, you can wear it as a brooch or hang it on a necklace. Let's see. It is magnetic. I don't know. It might go in one of my like brooch lots or don't know. Lots of earrings, so hopefully there might be some matches. Marco. Just a kid's crafted bracelet. So now I'm getting to the tango stuff, so we'll get through it. But I've only... I'm at 30 minutes now, and I can see the bottom of the box, and there's still some. This is just a handmade bracelet. I've made several like that. They're fun. I like... That's what I did as a kid. That was my crafting. Just making a bunch of those bracelets. So... This seems to have had other stuff on it that's not there. Feels kind of sticky, I don't know. It's got a nice looking quality clasp to it, but it's definitely got, you can see the color shining through the coating, very magnetic. I think I would just be throwing that in a bracelet lot. Stretch bracelet for a bracelet lot. 
this might be the culprit that stabbed me, but that's okay because it's neat. It is just a moon uh, brooch pin. Oops, wrong end. It is not magnetic. So I will test that one. Here's a dolphin charm in a bag. Uh, yeah, it's a little magnetic. Sometimes if there's a little magnetic pull, it may still be silver. It just depends on what it's mixed with. This does look older, and it does look like those might be real turquoise in there. Which means the metal parts might be real sterling. Seems like it's a quality, well-made bracelet. So I will look into that. I believe these little metal pieces are sterling and those are um, turquoise. I don't know. I think these might be plastic though, so I don't know. And I don't know what the white... I think it's like stone. We'll see. I will look into it. A fun little aliens, I think. Tiny little aliens. Kids bracelet. Can throw that in my craft pile. A fun stretchy ring. I've actually I listed a couple of these. It's not magnetic, but it's got like copper showing through. Listed a couple of these and surprisingly they actually people like these stretch rings. I was not expecting them to sell, but I listed them for the heck of it. Just a stretchy uh, rhinestone bracelet. Another bangle. A fun shell. A choker necklace. Does look older. But no markings on it. getting to the point where I'm gonna have to do some untangling here. Also getting to the point where I should be going home, but this has been sitting for so long I had to at least open one of these. So that means I probably won't do my research and finish the video until later, but this is a pretty butterfly just on nylon cord. Unmarked, but it might be. Oh, these little beads are magnetic. Normally if this was going to be sterling, then the beads. But I will test the butterfly pendant, because who knows? Somebody could have gotten it and just said, oh, it'll look pretty on here. It's pretty either way. Butterfly stuff does well for me, so even if it's not sterling, I can probably sell it. Just a little bracelet. Ooh, this is cool. Look at this one. It's got seahorse, seashells, starfish, snail shells. It's pretty, like, turquoise wash over something. Let's see. Not getting any magnetic pulls. Maybe there's some sterling on that. I will test that one as well. Guys, I'm really happy with this and I'm not even done with it yet. But that's a fun little fish brooch. Doesn't appear to be missing. Oh wait. No, he is. He's missing. At least he is missing a couple stones. So he'll probably go in a craft pile. Guessing he's. Uh, yeah, he's not sterling. He'll go in a craft pile. He'll look cool on some jewelry mosaic. And this is pretty. Another blingy bracelet. It's just got like a rope 
and fit over this ball. There we go. Not magnetic at all, so I will test that one as well. Man, I'm going to have to order some new testing acid soon. This bracelet is also not magnetic at all. Unmarked so that I can see. Just a fun rhinestone stretch bracelet. And these are all prong set, tiny little stones. It's pretty. It'll still probably go in a bracelet lot. There is a four leaf clover inside, like a lucite. I think, maybe. Let's see if this is done. The top little ring is definitely magnetic, but none of the casing for the clover is. Fun stretch bracelet from Bracelet Lot. Unbranded, unmarked statement necklace. And again, it doesn't look broken or anything, but this would be something fun. These pieces would go well in jewelry art, so I'll set it aside for that. I really want to know, did I really have a squash blossom necklace that I threw in a craft lot pile? Because if I did, I want to dig it out and I didn't find anything. Well, this is the best out of best friends and it's from Claire's. So unless I came across the friends out of best friends, um, but I'm guessing somebody else is donating that one separately, so that'd be a craft a uh, lot. I think I just found one matching earring, maybe. Um, some more bangles. Bangles, bangles. Okay, so this is something. La la la. I think it's all one thing. Maybe. Yeah, there's a tassel. Okay, there we go. So it's a fun tassel, gold tone, multi ring, necklace, no branding. My new Fitbit's telling me I have 175 steps I need to take to meet my goal for this hour. But I've been sitting here doing this all hour. How much time? I have 10 minutes to get those steps in, so that means I have to finish this real quick. This I might list individually just out of uniqueness. markings on this one, but it's cool. Something like this I'd probably put a dollar or two dollars on at uh, my local booth and sell it there. Um, this has hair stuck in it and an earring stuck in it. That's a leather cord uh, wooden bead necklace, but it's pretty frayed and yucky and has hair stuck in it. And maybe can find a purpose for it in crafting. Earring, earring. This is a little pearl, graduated pearl necklace and it does have writing along the edge of the clasp.
just says Japan. So just marked Japan on the side of the clasp. Nothing on there. But it's pretty. Um, this is Danecraft. Danecraft does all right for me. Um, little doctor's pin stethoscope and x-rays and the little blood pressure machine. I'm guessing that's maybe a $15, $20 pin there. I like it. I do. I like it. This has no branding, but they are individually knotted pearls. Very filthy, so there's no way I'm about to rub those against my teeth until they are well cleaned to see if they're real, but they look real. This is a broken multi-strand uh, bead bracelet. It's got some empty strings like this here hanging on. So there's beads that have fallen off and these that are about to fall off. But this is a fun little medallion thing on there. It's a little too magnetic, so I just throw this whole thing in my craft pile. This has somebody's $10 tag on it. From their own little booth. It's a short vintagey necklace. Magnetic, but very pretty. Something that I'd probably put at my booth for three or four dollars. It's it might be worthy of individual sale, I don't know. Stretch bracelet. We're close to the end. I'm just picking out the last of the stuff I can easily get to. Uh, this is, I'm guessing, an anklet. It's got little shell discs on there. Might say something on that tag. This, yeah, it might be a booth item for a buck. This is a multi-strand bracelet, little toggle clasp, it is magnetic, but it's pretty. It'll go nicely in a bracelet lot. I don't get as excited about selling bracelets individually, so I'm much more inclined to lock them up and sell them unless there is something really special about them. So some of my bracelet lots actually have some pretty decent stuff. This is kind of cool, but it's got like this little grapevine or little bunch of grapes on one end. There's no like clasps. I'm guessing that it was just attached here, so I can probably fix that. But then there's no, like, clasp, because I would imagine that would have been the front of the bracelet, or the necklace, but there would be no way you could get that over your head. So, I don't know. I could put that back on there and have it be a necklace, but you couldn't put it on. It's pretty. Let me see if those grapes are... Magnetic. The grapes are not magnetic, so they will get tested. Another little leather cord bracelet with a sunshine in the center. 
not magnetic, so that can get tested. Just a pretty silver and turquoise colored, not real turquoise, bracelet. Not magnetic, but I am not thinking that's real silver. I have been warned that I should test everything, so why not? Um, tangles, tangles, tangles. Another one of these bracelets. Here's this necklace with no markings and it is magnetic it's older and very pretty and very simple reminds me of the type I'm going to take this ring off now reminds me of types of necklaces that my grandma always wears uh, but I think hers real gold, so not that one. A little stretchy piece of elastic that might have been a ponytail holder or something at one point in time. And here is somebody's homemade necklace and bracelet combo. <laughs> so a piece of yarn can go in the garbage pile. I don't think I'm going to pull anything out like the bracelets that I pulled out at the top of this video. So, um, if you're waiting for more of that stuff, I am down to just the tedious, tiniest bit left in this box. Which is good, because my time is running out very quickly. I see a pony. So, we'll start with this little crystal glass horse on a silver tone necklace, which is highly magnetic. No markings, but it's pretty. That's something I'd probably put up at the booth for a couple bucks. A gold chain, very magnetic. This I'm going to throw in my craft pile because I like having um, chains. They do good for like outlining things and uh, plus I can tap into my craft pile chains if I ever find a pendant or something that I want to add to a chain to sell. I can use those. So This is just a multi-strand um, nylon cord necklace. Probably going to the booth. Little metal. Looks like two keychain straps combined. I'll throw that in the craft pile too. This is what we're looking at here. Just that tiny bit left. So... Um, a lot of it is earrings, earrings, earrings. This is a charm bracelet die, uh, and I think die might be the brand for the charms. I think I've seen that before. It's got lizard and flip flops, and that die. Let's see if there's anything that's not earrings. There's one more of these. And okay, I think all of the rest is earrings. So, I'm going to pull the earrings out and try to match them up and show those off. There's these two pieces of loose something. But I'm not seeing any obvious earring. Oh, here's a another necklace, or another bracelet. Let me show you this one. Just a fun, pretty 
eyeballs, I guess. I don't know. Bracelet. No brand markings on it. Oops. Very magnetic, but it's unique. I'll probably put this one at the booth for a buck. Okay, I'm going to sort the earrings, pull them out, and show you those in case there's anything special in there. And then uh, Monday when I come in, I will do the research and finish this video letting you know what stuff has value. But that won't matter to you because by the time you're watching it, you'll just be watching it straight through anyway. So there you go. Bye. And real quick, I'll run through all of the earrings that were in the box. That's these. I did have a couple pairs, so I've got these fun dream catchers. And then I've got these pretty abalone um, shell sterling silver ones. And these like tiger's eye cabacon sterling silver earrings. These pretty starfish. And these uh, dangly fun kind of like dream catchers earrings and these fish I think that's it for pears oh this one I'm guessing maybe they're supposed to look like dragonflies or something but they're cute these two things I think are belly rings correct me if I'm wrong because I do not have a belly button piercing but I think both of those are belly button rings and then these are just all individual earrings, just like a fish hook, a Maui's hook, a fisherman's hook, a giant fish, a feather, wooden discs, and just some randoms. This really, really pretty butterfly, giant earring, a little tree, some sparklies. This is cute. The back of it is the cat's feet. So when you put the back on, it looks like the cat's like laying around your ear. This was just a single earring that was broken. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. So I will do some research and be back shortly. Oh, and then this one, this was a single earring that matches this brooch that I pulled out earlier. The brooch doesn't have a branding of any nature on it and the earring says BN which I'm not sure I haven't looked up yet but I'm pretty sure they were a match so I'm going to uh, see what that is and if that brooch is by that brand also so that is it and I'll be back with a better idea of the box value shortly Okay, so I have had a chance to look up most of these and get an idea of what I can get. Some surprises, some disappointments, um, but this little stash here are the ones that I will sell individually online, um, which is actually a pretty big stash for what I'm going to list online compared to what I normally have in these boxes. Um, not necessarily a lot of high dollar stuff, but we will run through it. So, this will go up for eight to ten dollars with a um, with probably inclusion in my five for twenty sale on Poshmark. These two pieces will probably be about eight dollars each. These I don't know if I'll sell individually or together, but I'm just going to say eight dollars for the pair of them. These starfish earrings, the hooks tested as gold 10 or 12 carat uh, but I don't know if they're plated or not they're not marked anywhere and they appear new enough that they should be marked if they were gold uh, but if if I were to take the clasps off and weigh them they're less than a gram and if they're 10 carat gold at a gram that's like less than 20 bucks so I'm not gonna worry too much about it I'm probably going to list them as plated and sell them for about 15 bucks and see what happens until I figure out how to really tell if the stuff is plated or not. But um, these fun earrings I'll put up for $10. This brooch is not signed BN, but its matching earring was signed BN. And that is 
Bugby Niles was the brand. And I'm guessing I did find some brooches with matching earrings. None of them were selling that great, but I'm probably going to put the brooch up for eight bucks. This little charm bracelet, another eight dollars. These three bracelets together, I'll probably put up for about fifteen dollars. Um, this is a Howlite uh, bead bracelet. I'm guessing that the turquoise pieces are just out of Howlite. I'm guessing ten bucks on that. This I have no idea what I'll sell it for. Probably ten bucks. I don't have a brand or anything on it. Or I might end up just throwing it in a bracelet lot. But because it was tagged and says twenty-eight dollars, I feel like I should be able to get something out of it. This anklet with the kitty cats on it, I'll put up for about eight dollars. This tiger claw or lion claw necklace. I found a couple similar, nothing of high value, but I'm guessing I can get about 10 for that. This is an unsigned necklace. It was um, nothing special. It's just kind of unique and cool, so I'm thinking 10 on that. Same with this key with the little cat eye, cat's eye beads. I'm guessing about 10 there. This Japan vintage bead long necklace. I'm guessing I can get about 10 to 15 on that one. This was just the J. Crew necklace. It's very dirty. It needs to be cleaned up a bit, but I'm guessing I can get about 12 on that. This is the Sarah Coventry necklace. I'll probably put it up at 10. This is the Carolee necklace with uh, super heavy fake pearls, but they are individually knotted. I'm guessing I can get about $25 on this. There, you can see the Carolee a little better. $25 there. This I was still unable to find. I don't necessarily have any reason to believe it's fake by any means, and it does have the Coach snap. So if you know anything about Coach ever offering a bracelet that looks like this, let me know. I did not do an extensive search. I just kind of glanced around. But if it is genuine and I can sell it, I'm guessing it's only maybe a $10 thing tops. But, uh, yeah, if you know anything about that Coach piece, let me know. This one surprised me. This is, um, oh, what was it? What was it? Oh, Eisenberg Ice is the brand. Eisenberg Ice. Let's see if you can see that. There you go. Eisenberg Ice. Some people are listing these on eBay and Etsy for anywhere from like 40 bucks to $200. And I was expecting it to be just a really ch cheap, junky piece of costume jewelry. So... I don't know where my price point is in that, but for the sake of determining value of the box, I'm just saying about 50 bucks, and I will have to do a little more research on this piece and maybe go a little higher. My Crazy Cat Lady Charm bracelet will be about an $8 sale. These Sterling um, Cabacon earrings, about $15. These Sterling Avalone, Avalone earrings, about $15. Um, this Danecraft pin, about $15. And then finally these, these were my big disappointments in the lot. This is definitely not Sterling, just maybe, maybe silver plated, I guess. But probably only 10 or 15 bucks on this piece. It is really cool though. And then this one is tested as silver, but not sterling. So it is a lower purity, maybe 800 instead of 925, I don't know. But I do believe the turquoise is genuine turquoise. I think I can still get 40 bucks, if not a little higher for this one, even if it's not sterling, but it is really cool. I might aim high on that. It's got the cool like arrowheads and the heart. But 
it's unmarked. I don't know, let me know what you think. If you know much about Navajo, Indian, Native American type jewelry, does this look genuine to you? It's definitely well, well made and there is a lot of detail work put into it. For now, I'm going to say 40 on that. So that's it. Um, those are the ones that will go up individually. There were about 24 pieces that will go to my booth. So if you figure 50 cents to a dollar, if you were going to sell them like at a garage sale or something, assuming you don't have a local booth that you have going ongoing, or if you do like an annual once a year flea market and you save up all the extra stuff for that, you can make money on it even if you don't have the booth. I can take them and drop them off there. My pieces will be anywhere from $1 to $4 for the ones I set aside for the booth. Um, but yeah, if they don't sell over time, I just keep marking them down anyway. So there's those. And then there were about 20 bracelets that went in my bracelet lot. Just little cheap bangles and stuff. And only two rings, I think, and three or four pairs of earrings that went into the earring lots. So those might add another $5 total value to what I get for all of this stuff. So before I started talking, and I'm sure my numbers aren't going to all add up now, but I figured about $287 as my lower range of what I can expect for everything. Um, if I assume that I'm going to ship each of these pieces individually at $3 a piece, which it'll range from like $270 to $340, um, and then if I assume 20% fees on all of them as if they were selling on Poshmark, which actually I should then assume 30 because most of them would be 295 in fees. But anyway, I came up with I should expect at a minimum about $161 back in my pocket for this box, which is pretty decent. And that's kind of the minimum. I tried to use my lower range of what I think I will get or sell them for. So... Yeah, $161 for $20 invested. Still have another box to open. I have a thread up jewelry box coming and a thread up fun box coming. And then two more of these boxes coming, yay. And I have a FabFitFun winter box I still haven't opened yet. I need to get that up too. But it is now Monday morning and I've spent my first hour and a half playing around looking this stuff up and finishing this video. So now I need to get my Monday shipments out. Thanks for watching, everybody. Um, be sure to give me a thumbs up if you haven't yet. If you know anything about any of these pieces, let me know. Subscribe. Come back for more. Um, yeah, that's it. Bye, everybody.